Hello, I'm Austin Federa, one of the three co-founders of Double Zero. Uh, thanks for coming out today. So what we are building is a high-performance new internet optimized for distributed systems. And when we say a new physical infrastructure network, what we mean is physical fiber cables under the ocean, running on top of uh, mountains, through valleys. Uh, we're talking about the physical lowest level infrastructure that actually powers the internet of today, as opposed to software overlay networks or other types of systems. So this is a purpose-built network for high performance distributed systems. So we're going to get into a little bit of what that means. So new base layer infrastructure, right? This is like, I can't hit this point enough, because what we're talking about here is the core fabric of how most modern companies use the internet today. The spoiler is they don't actually use the internet. They use something alongside the internet. So we're, this is an alternative physical pathway for things like consensus, state propagation, transaction fulfillment, RPCs, validators. This is not an L1. This is not an L2. We're calling this thing an N1. It is a network layer that is a un new physical underpinning for all high performance distributed systems. You can't deploy smart contracts to it. Uh, you don't even get servers from us. This is an, instead of talking to the public internet, your system talks through the double zero network. And you might ask, why do we need this? So the internet was not built for high performance, and it certainly was not built for blockchain. So what you're seeing here is a simplified version of a network latency graph over time. And so the orange and the yellow represents ping times, the amount of time it takes to get a response from a server when you send a request to it uh, over the public internet. Now, we've actually run this test, and you can find a much more detailed version of these things uh, on our Twitter accounts and on the website. Um, but what you see here is a lot of variability in ping times. Each one of those dots represents one measurement. And so what you see here is latency varies dramatically. This measurement is called jitter. It's the lack of determinism on the public internet. This is caused by all sorts of things. This is caused by traffic merging, different systems talking to one another. You basically back up packets in a queue. And what happens when you back up packets in a queue? They slow down. And when systems slow down, we can deal with actually a lot of latency in high-performance systems. What we can't deal with is a lot of variability. So when data comes in out of order, you have to wait for it all to come in and then assemble it in the correct order. Um, and so this is really a network, the internet, which was built for resiliency, not performance. And this blue line on the bottom, this is actually measurements we've taken on one of the testnet components of the double zero network. What you can see from this is it's an extremely consistent performance. And so that means if you are going to send like a transaction to a leader, you will know how long it takes to get there. That is not the case today on the internet. There's a huge amount of variability in that. And we are not the only ones who thought of this idea. In fact, most high performance networks are not actually run on the public internet today. You may look at this list and think most of these are internet companies. And that's true. These companies do operate on the internet. But the majority of the networks they run, the majority of the way they move data around the world is not on the public internet. It is on a parallel physical network to the public internet that they run. Uh, you, know, you may notice uh, jump trading up on this list, too. If you've read Flash Boys, the same dynamics that sort of powered that industry of using dedicated fiber to be faster than the public alternatives for trading stocks, that's basically taken over the entire mindset of both the financial service industry and other industries as well. Google has invested huge amounts of money in private fiber. Meta, which, you know, again, Meta is a software company, but they're one of the largest investors in private fiber infrastructure nowadays, not out of the goodness of their hearts, but because they want to sell ads to people. And in order to sell ads to people, you need to serve them fast Instagram videos. But it's not just these companies. Thousands of organizations around the world either own and manage or utilize private networks for their content delivery. And it's time we bring the same to blockchain. But the answer is, why? Right? So for years, the biggest limiting factor in blockchains was the software packages. Back in 2017, 2018, if you downloaded a software client, uh, even like you know, re a Geth from Ethereum, and you ran it locally, you could not get over a few hundred transactions per second. Today, we have FireDancer and Agave, which can both hit over a million transactions per second in testing environments. 
Now, testing environments are never indicative of real world performance entirely, but a huge reason that we see this massive delta between what's theoretically possible and the sort of 7,000 transactions per second we see on Solana today is that the public internet is the limiting factor in how fast you can run these systems. So what do we do? Do we try and make the public internet better? Do we go around to all these internet service companies that started in the 60s and 70s and 80s and ask them to please optimize their systems for blockchain? Well, we could do that, and some are trying to do that. But instead, we're starting from the ground up. We're starting from the principles and philosophy that have made high-performance networking the default standard in the private industry and bringing that to crypto. But we're not doing that in the traditional way. So, High performance networking at this point is not optional. It is absolutely essential if we're going to see blockchain systems compete with TradFi systems and centralized Web2 systems. A classic example of this is every time you load an ad on a web page, there is a real-time auction to bid for that ad impression. That is an extremely high performance system. We need the capacity on blockchain to move one of the largest financial markets no one talks about as a financial market onto crypto as well. And also, the private networks that exist today, they're not network effect institutions, right? If Jump builds a private network for trading, if Amazon builds a private network to send data around, that doesn't actually benefit anyone else. But the thing that's so interesting about Double Zero and our, our approach to this is there's too many places in the world for any one company to connect. So we have multiple independent network contributors contributing to this big network graph. This gives us characteristics that we care about in blockchain, like verifiability, uh, censorship resistance, the ability to have these positive sum relationships of people who would normally be competitors working together to build a high performance network for the future of blockchain. And why do we need a million transactions per second? Why do we need 100 gigabits of global bandwidth connectivity? Because there's nothing in the history of technology that has ever taught us that enough is enough, right? Your phone gets faster every year. Developers think of new things to do with them. Your bandwidth gets faster every year. People think of new things to do with them. And this is really because, at its core, entrepreneurship is driven by cost reduction. If you can 10x capacity and you can bring the cost down by 10x as well, you're going to have entirely new use cases that no one felt was possible before. So this is our Mars mission, bring high performance networking to crypto. And we need to do this. This is not optional. If we really want these systems to compete with TradFi systems, if we really want a million transactions per second or 10 million transactions per second on one global state machine, we need to embrace high performance networking the way every other software company and every other software industry has done. And this really is like the superpower of capitalism, this abundance mindset. The ambition of crypto today is too small. We have Kevin Bowers on stage this morning talking about a million transactions per second. That's a great start. Let's 10x that. Let's get 10 networks that can operate at 500,000 TPS. Uh, that is the vision. That is the mission. That is the goal. There is never too much capacity or too much bandwidth. And when we increase bandwidth and reduce latency, we enable entirely new use cases we never thought were possible. And quite frankly, no one can envision today. Uh, so the message and the takeaway here is competition is back on the menu. If you're competing with big tech today, you're building on their servers, you're building on their rails, you're using their internet pipes. Uh, it's, it's not a level playing field. And so if we can build an alternative physical network, other people can come on and build compute networks like Solana has done. People can build storage networks. We can rebuild the entire stack of the Web2 enterprise in a permissionless way with verifiability, with censorship resistance, with independent network contributors. But it has to start at the base layer. We can't start with the grand vision on the software side. We have to go back to the basics and say, if the physical capacity of the physical fiber lines is not sufficient for the system, the system can't work. Zero knowledge proving is great. ZK compression is great. These are all band-aids on top of the systemic problem, which is the public internet is not performant enough to live up to the morals and value structure that we think blockchain needs to be built on. So this is double zero. Uh, we, our test net is up and running at the moment. Uh, we are launching this fall. We are launching with full support for Solana, which is going to be very exciting to see, because Solana is one of the few networks where the validator clients are able to do significantly more than the public internet allows them to do today. And 
you know, we're here in New York for the first time. We're here at Accelerate. And one of the pieces that I think is really important about this is bringing crypto back to the United States, making it a competitive environment for entrepreneurs and not forcing entrepreneurs offshore. So we actually worked earlier this year with CoinList to do their first regulated token offering in the United States uh, since 2019. And to talk a little bit more about that, we're going to have the CEO of CoinList, Raghav, come up and join us. Thank you.